What is going on? Boo Eyes Guy here, and just before we get into the the famous uh, slicing syntax video that I've been promising since the dawn of time, um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to a fellow YouTuber of mine, and in fact, a real life friend of mine, um, Ducats. Uh, he's been making some really good content. Um, he puts a ton of effort into his videos, uh, but as a small YouTuber, even smaller than me, he doesn't really get a lot of uh, views, and I really think he deserves that. So I'll be putting a short little um, cut out of his video, um, which I'd like to thank him for providing me with, uh, and also a link to his channel in the description below, and probably an annotation over the video. Um, so if you guys want to see some, like, kind of funny, interesting videos, um, just with him and a bunch of his mates, just go check him out, because, um, I really think that they're, you know, they're a light, easy watch. Um, but anyway, let's get into this video, which is about array slicing syntax. So, uh, firstly and foremost, let's read from the book here. Uh, a slice is a reference to or a view into another data structure. Uh, they are useful for allowing safe, efficient access to a portion of an array without copying. For example, you might want to reference just one line of a file read into memory. By nature, a slice is not created directly, but from an existing variable binding, slices have a defined length, can be mutable or immutable. So uh, let's just quickly break this part down. Um, so slices, this is probably, I think, the most important part of this whole uh, sentence for someone who's learning about slicing syntax, uh, which actually still kind of includes me. Um, slices are a fairly new thing uh, from any language that I've ever used, so they're really, I think they're really cool. Um, but for me, this is the thing which sticks out the most, and that's um, a slice is a reference to, or a, a, as they like to kind of paraphrase, a view into another data structure. So um, if for any of you who have used SQL, um, you'll kind of know that you can either select directly from a table or you can kind of create a view that looks into uh, that data structure. And although that's not super the same as um, what Rust's views are, that's kind of like... Um Kind of like a way that I like to think about it. Um, another way that you could think about it is like um, you are in a pair of binoculars and um, you kind of have a look, you kind of like have a look into, you know, um, I don't know, a shop's window for all the things that are in there. That's, that's kind of a view um, in the way, the best way that I can really describe it. Um, Another important thing about um, at a more technical level is um, about their efficiency, um, and that's they're they're actually very efficient because um, they can view into a portion of an array without copying the array. So essentially, you're not making like um, you're not making a, a duplicate of uh, the data that you want. Um, so let's just say you wanted like position. Um, four, five, six, and seven. Well, you're not actually copying the data. You're just kind of looking into it. Um, so there's only ever really one copy of that data still in memory, uh, which is which is a lot more efficient than let's say if you're copying a gigabyte of data. Um, so then you'll have two gigabytes of data uh, versus just looking at that one gigabyte of data sitting in memory already. Um, the the rest of it is is kind of important, but I mean it's not super important. You'll kind of get that from the syntax. Um, obviously, it's important to note that they can be mutable or immutable, as some data structures are, I believe, can only be um, immutable, or some of them are uh, mutable by default. Um, but anyway, let's get into some syntax. So. You can use a combo of the um, ampersand and the square brackets to create a slice from various things. So let's go ahead and scaffold the project. Uh, I'm just going to be creating it obviously in the same directory that I always do. So we'll say cargo new and we'll call this one array underscore slices underscore syntax dash dash bin for a binary and let it scaffold our new project and we'll fly away the terminal. There we go. Now, what we're going to want to do is first, we're going to want to create an array. So, um, if you've been watching my previous videos on arrays, then you should know by now how to create an array in Rust. So, we'll just clear away the defaultly scaffolded. Is defaultly even a word? I doubt defaultly is a word, but sounds cool anyway, I think. Alright, so what we're going to do is, um, we're just going to create an array. So, uh, we'll just go with the book here, because I think it's the easiest and the most correct way of doing things here. Um, so, we'll say, let A is equal to, except we'll just use our own numbers. We'll say 52... Um, 101, I don't know, 27, 36, um, and we'll do one more, we'll say 99, uh, cool, so we'll just save that, 
no problems. Um, it just built, and we get a little warning. It says um, unused variable, but if you guys haven't seen that before in one of my videos, um, then I would just go watching back because um, it's a fairly common thing. If you have something like uh, Rust FMT, it will just tell you, hey, you haven't used this variable, um, but you've allocated stuff to it. So let's continue on. So what we can do is let's just let's just quickly print out our array here. So we'll say we'll we'll use the array and we'll print it out and we'll say we'll go back to our terminal, say cargo run. And if you remember in the old video, um, it just prints out the uh, whoops. Um, we'll say array slash syntax. Go into there and we'll say cargo run. And there you go. So we get 52, 101, 27, 36, and 99. Hopefully those are the winning lotto numbers, but they're probably not. So. Let's just say I wanted to get a subset of this uh, of this array. Well, firstly, I want to show you um, without getting a subset but still using slicing syntax. So let's let's just go into it. So um, we'll say let entire underscore array equal to, and then we're going to use this little ampersand symbol here. So um, what we do is we say and for the ampersand, and then we say uh, the variable name. So we go um, in our case it's a. And then we do this. Now, the, the really important part of the slicing syntax, and we'll show this in the next uh, example, is this dot, dot, dot. Sorry, two dots, my bad. And um, we'll end the line. So what that basically does is um, it essentially creates the view into, uh, into the array. So what we're going to do is we're going to print this out. We'll say entire underscore array. And uh, my autocomplete did some weird, <clears throat> sorry, something weird there. Uh, and we'll go ahead and uh, let's run this and we'll say cargo run. So as you can see on both sides of the spectrum here, we've got 52, 101, 27, 36, 99, 52, 101, 27, 36, 99. So exactly the same. Okay. So let's just say that I wanted to get um, everything from, uh, I don't know. Let's just say I wanted to get everything from here to uh, here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, I want everything from position zero all the way up to position three. Now we're going to save that and we will run that from the terminal and we'll say cargo run. And there you go. So what, what essentially has happened here is Rust has gone. All right. Well, I want to create a, I want to create a view into this array a up here and I want to peer at specifically the points of data 52, 101, and 27. I just want to finish this video by um, obviously finishing the book since I like to have a complete tutorial here. Um, the Rust book simply finishes off by saying slices have a type of uh, reference to T. Uh, we'll talk about that T when we cover generics. Um, you can find more documentation for slices in the standard library documentation primitive.slice.html if you're following along online. Um, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, in the next video, we're going to be covering the string type, then the tuple type. Uh, and then if I turn the page here, we'll look at one more. We'll see. Ah, and we'll look at tuple indexing. Hey guys, um, I'd really appreciate if you clicked on the annotation above this video and subscribe and watch uh, Dukas' video. He puts a lot of effort into them. And uh, I think it's quite funny, actually, some of the stuff that he does. Uh, but this video that you're seeing on screen now is a little uh, excerpt of their Blender Taste Test Challenge. It's quite gross, quite uh, weird, quite awesome. Um, basically just a bunch of drunk guys trying to figure out what exactly that they're eating. And a bunch of even more drunker people trying to make sure that the other person throws up. I think, or something like that. But anyway, um, really appreciate if you check that out, guys. Thanks.